Chapter 5 The Path of Salvation Arriving at the next session, people found themselves on the street as they were denied entry to the large theater due to the dark powers conspiring against Bhagavan. It was too dangerous for them, given what Bhagavan was doing. However, one devoted disciple suggested using a cinema where he had connections. People went there to hear the voice of truth. Since the dark powers were unaware of the new location, another preaching was successfully held. Yet, they followed Bhagavan closely, attempting to hinder his mission in every possible way. Once again, the crowd gathered in the hall, and the master, before delivering his message, turned to God. O oh Lord, help, enlighten, guide, so that I may convey the truth to the hearts of your children. Bhagavan's lips whispered backstage. And like a waterfall of grace and power, the Divine responded, inspiring him for the sacred task. He walked out to the people, and once again, a collective prayer resounded, and having concluded it, he spoke. Let us worship the Divine Power that bestows grace and wisdom upon us, he said, bowing in heartfelt reverence to the audience. May the truth be revealed, uttered the sage, and the people took their seats, attentive to the voice of the messenger of the circle of Kailash priests. And the sage declared the great truth. He said, Presently, all of you live in a disastrous, unhappy state, and this is because the ruling classes have severed your connection with the higher. The point is that many information streams operate in the world, capturing and enslaving the human mind as, for example, fascist and communist ideologies did. These low streams come to you through the means of mass delusion, television, radio, press, Tune your mind to the crudest and most primitive ideas, vibrations that incite people to aggression, sex, violence, meaningless work, building communism or fascism because it does not need it at all. All this fuss is masked by the idea of happiness, prestige, justice, love, but in the end, people are simply exploited, making them go to war for a noble cause, or work to the bone, or give away all their resources, time, energy in pursuit of fashion, prestige, some things, and other imposed interests. In fact, all that a person needs is to achieve a special inner state which can be called harmony, where he is filled with peace, happiness, bliss, in which everything around him becomes clear and understandable. This state is internal, and to achieve it, a person can tune into a special stream of energy of knowledge, grace, which comes to us from our soul, the universe, from God. The practice of such tuning is Ishvara Pranadhana, that is, opening oneself to the flow of divine energy coming from God. The whole universe is his physical body, and he is his soul, which is in everything. True prayer to God is not words or mantras, it is grace, love, selflessness overflowing hearts. Words, mantras, icons, music, rosaries, all these are just means of tuning into this stream, into this state. And one should learn to enter it, be in God, 
because that is what brings happiness. So pray, perform Ishvara Pranidhana to the state of grace every day, and you will find God within yourself and become godly beings from semi-humans, semi-animals. And it doesn't matter which god you pray to, as these are just names and images of the same Ishvara. Whether it is Buddha, Christ, Krishna, Ahura Mazda, or Allah. Practice dhyana, merging with God, with His prana, energy, grace. Absorb it into your heart, and this power will transform your being. You will be transformed. Your mind, feelings, body will change. Diseases, sufferings, ignorance will disappear. You will no longer be able to torment and suffer as before. Pray to God in nature, in solitude, dancing. Find a form that will help you better tune into His flow. I am here in the city, organizing a meditation center where all seekers, all radiant souls, can practice this path of happiness and joy. Aum. Bhagavan pronounced, and on his noble and wise face reflected the divine radiance. And all present in the hall felt the great grace filling their hearts. The next thing you need to do for your development to achieve happiness, prosperity, and wisdom is Svadhana, knowing your higher self, which is a spark of the divine flame, a particle of God. From the moment you remember yourself, you feel, I am. You feel yourself in dreams and waking, as a child, an old person, and an adult. The sense of I am is the highest, authentic self. But then you begin to identify with the body, senses, with the mind. You start thinking, I am German, Jewish, I am a communist, atheist, etc. All of this creates a false identity, which you are not at all, but try to appear to others and to yourself. It is necessary to know your true self, which in India is called Sva, through dhyana, meditation, simply observing detachedly, separating yourself from the mind, thoughts, and false identity, then from emotions, and finally from the body. Then you will see that I is a witness, an observer. I am not the doer. Everything happens on its own, and I am just faced with the fact of various disturbances and changes happening to my feelings, thoughts, body. But all this should not remain just theoretical knowledge for you. You need to practice it constantly, as soon as you remember it. Separating your I from your non-I, from what it is not. Say to any of your thoughts and feelings, this is not me. Whatever happens, say, it is not happening to me, it is happening to my shirt, my iron, my body. They relate not to me, but to my hairstyle, appearance, personality. But all this is not me. I am just a witness of all this. This is Svadhyaya, leading you to Moksha, Kivalya, Nirvana. 
complete and final liberation from the bonds of samsara and karma. So, after the prayer to Ishvara, perform Svadhyaya, but while doing it, you will see that something is not working, lacking persistence and diligence. Then start kindling tapas. It is a state of activity, determination, self-sacrifice, a strong desire to achieve liberation. Do not be lazy. Do not let life carry you away, but ignite this aspiration in yourself. It can be just fast walking combined with a thought that awakens emotional impulses that I will not deviate from the goal. I will practice. I will achieve liberation. I will break free from the slavery of this life. At this point, fire arises in you. It appears in the chest, in the lower abdomen, your eyes burn. Direct this seal upwards so that you can feel that you have become higher, more spiritual, more refined. Only such tapas can help you not to stop, not to cease practice. Without such diligence and kindling the inner fire, practice is impossible. You will achieve nothing. But by igniting the fires of Manipura, Ajna, Anahata, you will gain the necessary perseverance for this attainment. However, you need one more thing. Santosha. Joyfulness. Since your emotions will seek joy, satisfaction, and they will look for all this outside, in people's love, in buying a car, in praise, in a partner, and all this will nullify your determination to achieve truth. You need Santosha. Start rejoicing and being happy just like that, without praise, without recognition, without thinking that now everything is fine with you, that you are loved, that your husband brought the salary, that the children got an A. All these are conditions that do not allow you to achieve happiness because it should not come from somewhere outside. It should come from inside yourself, from your heart. Start rejoicing for no reason as in childhood. Rejoice against all odds, even if everything is bad. If it's the end of the world, rejoice. Be happy. Be satisfied. Whatever happens, be happy. Don't give yourself a reason to suffer. It's a bad habit. It's pointless. Useless. Just rejoice. Laugh. Have fun. Allow yourself to be happy. Why postpone? depend on someone or something. It is precisely because you have placed your happiness, your joy, independence of others' opinions, on the conformity of the desired and the actual, on the realization of your fantasies in life, on being like everyone else, that now you are so deeply unhappy. You nostalgically recall childhood when joy filled you, just like that. And now you can easily return to this state and achieve the happiness that has always been inside you. This is a mandatory condition for practice. Without tapas, 
There is no Santosha. And without Santosha, diligence on the path of truth. But as you proceed, you will see that your body interferes with your practice. Either you didn't get enough sleep, something hurts, or you lack energy, your tone is reduced. In that case, you need to turn to Shaosha to purify the body through yogic practices, as it will be challenging to practice without a clean, healthy body. It is difficult to have both diligence and inner joy, detachment, and everything else. Therefore, practice moderate eating, exercise, nature walks, and cleansing procedures, which I will provide separately. In childhood, you were healthier and therefore happier. And now you need to cleanse yourself because progress will be difficult without it. First of all, pay attention to your diet. The amount of food should correspond to your physical activity. Since many employees now have physical activity no more than a yogi in a cave, the amount of food should be appropriate. The first thing I recommend is to switch to porridge and give up all other food. However, so that porridge does not seem tasteless to you, as you still have attachments to certain sensations. Cook them with spices, salt, and greens. First, you can even season them with a tasty sauce. Instead of meat, use fried vegetables, prepared in the same way with garlic, onion, salt, as meat. This is a transitional stage. It immediately gives you an influx of health and strength. Next, you can move on to sprouted wheat, which will fully bring you to a yogic diet. Also, do not forget to rinse your nose and stomach with salt water every morning. This has an amazing, rejuvenating effect. Bhagavan explained the rules of Shaosha for a long time, but we will not provide them in full as they are already well known from other yogic literature. So, remember, concluded the sage, that every morning you can start with Shaosha, then practice Santosha. Start laughing joyfully until your entire being is filled with joy. Next, cultivate tapas, and then engage in Svadhyaya, after that, perform the prayer of Ishvara Pranadhana, and only after the prayer, practice asana and pranayama, maintaining the necessary attitude. Apply these five points of spiritual practice in any endeavor, combining them with the five principles of yama that I gave you earlier, then your actions will be true. After the sermon, the audience turned to the master with questions. You say to pray to some Ishvara, said a Krishna devotee with a pigtail. But in the Bhagavad Gita, it is clear that you should only pray to Krishna, chanting the Maha Mantra. Krishna and Ishvara are the same. And when you repeat the mantra, Hare Krishna, it is the same as repeating the name of a beloved hastily a thousand times. Say it once, but with great love and devotion. Then it will be more beneficial because you, Krishna devotees, still have bhakti yoga. This is the yoga of love, not the yoga of counting replied the sage. Engaging in yoga is not advisable in our time, especially in the city. 
declared an elderly lady, apparently an Agni Yoga enthusiast. No, it is precisely in our time, in the city, that one must practice yoga, or else humanity will simply perish. After all, by practicing pranayama, a person can actually absorb fewer poisonous substances than when breathing in the usual way. For example, some people took a couple of breaths from pranayama, talad yukta, and shunyana, organized their method, and treated people. And someone took another breath from pranayama, called bastrika, and induces people into a trance through it. What other wonderful things can yoga reveal to us? And soon, you will see for yourself in our classes. There is no god and no soul, declared a shaven-head Buddhist with rosaries around his neck. There is only shunyata, emptiness, and the nature of Buddha within oneself. And you talk about praying to God and knowing some self. All this is unnecessary. The highest reality can be called different names, replied the great master. Some call it Shunyata, some Buddha, some the Absolute, some Krishna, Jehovah, or God. It can be denoted and described in various ways. However, it is not as crucial as how we describe it. What matters is the path to attaining this reality. I have walked this path, attained enlightenment, and now I can help you achieve the liberation that I have found. As for Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, they are all part of the great teaching of the circle of Kailash priests, which we will study together examining it from the great source, not as it has been distorted by ignorant people. Don't confuse people, a young priest interjected. It is written, no one comes to the Father except through me. This was said by Christ, so nothing should be studied except Christianity. Everything else is from the devil. Every religion speaks of its exclusivity, calmly responded the savior of humanity. Muslims will tell you that there is no God but Allah. Krishna devotees will say that God is Krishna. Every religious egregore is interested in attracting as many followers as possible, so it speaks to its exclusivity. But often behind such exclusivity lies simple fanaticism, or, worse, the fires of inquisition and crusades. Is that exclusivity already? Is that already Christianity? This is how all teachings sooner or later degenerate and turn into their opposite. From preaching love to the fires of inquisition, from wise teachings to the dogmatism of fanatics. That's why I came here, to reveal the essence of all teachings, to show their true meaning. Tell us, what does your name mean, Bhagavan? asked one guy. It means embodied knowledge, the master replied and I came here to give it to you." The great master continued to answer many questions with the same brightness and wisdom, revealing new knowledge to those present. In the end, the master announced, Wars are raging all over the world right now. Instead of just hearing about it on TV, we could have long applied the practice of Sampo to stop this massacre. And now, together with you, we will do it. And in the future, I will teach you how to easily influence all global processes and resolve conflicts in your own life. Stand up. 
turn to God. Raise your hands to the sky. The hall obeyed. The master continued. O oh Lord, help us. Give us your strength so that we can help our brothers suffering in war. A great wave of cosmic power entered the bodies of those present with these words. Now, mentally visualize the place where the war is happening and direct this divine energy there with great power and the desire for this war to cease. People with great selflessness and determination began to send rays of energy from their chakras, setting intentions to stop the war and establish peace and tranquility. After a few minutes, the master continued, And now, again with love and devotion, open yourself to God and replenish the energy spent with divine power then enter a state of detachment, and through it, return to the normal state. Soon after that, news spread about the cessation of war in the place where divine energy was directed. The wise sage resolved many more wars and conflicts with his disciples and, using clairvoyance, prevented those that were only forming in the minds of those obsessed with malice and a thirst for power. After the preaching, the sage announced the opening of a meditation center where all interested individuals could delve into the in-depth practical study of the great legacy of the circle of Kailash priests. Afterward, a balding middle-aged man dressed in a strict black suit approached him. I am an academic from a research institute, he introduced himself. Would you like to have a conversation, perhaps visit our institute? We are, so to speak, colleagues. He smirked, sitting in a black car with a couple of people in black sunglasses, evidently from special services. They arrived at a small town of scientists and entered the research institute into its forbidden part, located in the basement. Tell me, why do you open people's eyes? The academic spoke. Let them remain in their ignorance. The country needs slaves, as you understand. They are too smart, and why make them intelligent? Let them work for you too. We have been monitoring you for a long time and know your capabilities. We could make you, so to speak, an academic. You would work for the good of the country in our institute. We would allocate a cottage for you. I know you live in an old summer house, not suitable for a person of your caliber. Look at the equipment we have here. The academic led Bhagavan to a laboratory with a working television showing the city channel. This is our secret weapon of zombification. Do you see the psychotronic emitter? It is connected to television, and through the screens, we irradiate all fellow citizens, so to speak, implanting the necessary codes into them. But no one even suspects this, and they start doing what the government needs. And what do you do? You connect people to God. Why? They will become free, you know. And who benefits from that? No. It's better for them to watch television. Do you watch television yourself? Me? The academic was astonished. Of course not. I don't watch television. So you don't want to become a slave yourself. But why do you zombify others? The master asked sternly. Well, you know, it's our job. We do it now, so to speak. Instead of pastors, instead of priests in the church. Previously, they were brainwashing people, but now they can't do it anymore. Nobody goes to church. So the government entrusted us with the opium for the people. People need a reign. Earlier, they kept slaves in chains, 
and now the chains have become subtle, informational. They are in people's minds, and we forge them. And what about you? Will you help us forge, so to speak, a bright future? The academic said, looking questioningly at Bhagavan's majestic and wise face. No, replied the master. I serve God, and you serve the devil. I came here to free people precisely from your zombification. For this, I was born on this earth in this terrible place, to save humanity from your chains, not to sit in cottages and ride in government limousines. I can sit in a cave. It's even better for me. Well, just watch out, said the academic, as you might regret it later. We can write about you in the newspapers, smear you, so to speak, with mud. We can do that in one go. And if something happens, you know how they dealt with Christ? The same fate could await you. Without listening to his threats, the world savior turned around and walked away from this hellish place, heading towards those who were still capable of hearing his voice, drowned out by the psychotronic emitters of this institute. The academic was already consulting with people from the special services about what to do with this precursor of Christ. Well, said the older one, let's send our students to this master. Let them learn and gradually distort his teachings, reshaping them according to our preferences. Yes, not only students, added the second one in black sunglasses, the younger one. Let's also send female students. We have some who might divert him from the true path or somehow cause trouble. Where there is a woman, there is discord. He smirked unpleasantly. Meanwhile, Bhagavan walked along a shaded alley in the park, filled with compassion for all the people of Earth, offering a heartfelt prayer to God. Lord, help Enlighten. Give me the strength to fulfill your will. Help all the people on this earth. Enlighten them. Guide them. Do not let the powers of evil destroy their souls. I ask for all this for the glory of you. Bhagavan kept walking and walking, praying for humanity and tears of compassion flowed from the eyes of the ascetic. Do you want to know more? Watch the animated masterpiece that reveals the mysteries of humanity. Discover more sacred knowledge in books. You can meet the main characters of books at our seminars. Find your amulet of power. Participate in an individual ritual. Open free channel with daily spiritual practices for yourself. All these you will find on our website www.amazon1.org.